Ladies and good morning. My name is Matteo Palma, the principal of Little Flower RC School. Um, our school consists of eight teachers plus one administrator. Presently, we have 185 students, pretty small school, but it encompasses up five, five communities, Paris Home Village, Elridgeville, Asintoville, Emery Grove, and also there's another, we have children that come from Punta Verde Town, Cat Landing Village. So Little Flower School is like a network of different communities. Um, so far today, we have distribution of learning packages. We have parents who will be coming around to collect their learning packages from different communities. Hopefully we'll, we'll open pretty soon, um, maybe within a month or two, or maybe within the next two weeks. But first we're gonna have a meeting with our teachers today and thereafter meeting with parents and we will finalize exactly what will happen as it relates to the reopening of our primary school, right? This is um, the front view of our building. This was drawn by a student. We have our COVID regulations on the um, left hand side of the building. When the parents come to school, we have two wash basins for them to wash their hands, to stick to protocols for safety. You know, we need to emphasize safety for our kids. So we have parents here coming, parents on the side. They come and collect papers, right? So this is the first part of our building. This is the front view, the entrance, right? We're along the highway, right? Okay, we're gonna move over. Okay, this is our second segment of our video. This is our isolation room. One of the requirements by Ministry of Education, we must have an isolation room. Here, we didn't want to write the word isolation room. So what we wrote is St. Therese, Sick Bay. St. Therese is our patron saint of our school. And in order, whenever our children get sick, they will come here to this little area here. And this is where we keep the children. Children, teachers, whosoever gets sick will come to this sick bay. It is um, just not 100% completed, but it's just a little area for children to come in. It needs some cleaning, you know, but don't worry, we'll get this going. It has been here for the past year and a half, you know. Pretty soon, like what I said, as long as we're going to reopen, we're going to get everything in shape. We need to install a wash and basin so the, the children wash their hands or parents wash their hands or teachers wash their hands before entering into the sick bay room. Just basically chair for children to rest until the parents come and get them literally to take them to the hospital right so this is our sick bay area here we have our pump house but our pump house is falling apart this needs some serious renovation we have our own water system so we don't um, depend on the government for water we have our well here and uh, this is what provides us with water every day. So this will go under construction. We need to get rid of this, demolish this, and build um, a newer house for our pump. It has been here for the past 15 years, so it's time for us to do some renovation on this building. Yes, this is our third short segment. Here we are looking at the um, building itself. If you notice, the fascia board here is totally rotten. We, we need to do a physical repair of the building, all the heads around. We need to change these, the guttering are falling apart. It will take a little time to get this completed. Um, you know, due to weathering, you know, this is this is very um, important. When it rains, the guttering helps a lot, so the water doesn't fall on the corridor when the kids are here, right? So, parents, with assistance of parents, we could get this done, right? We, I have an excellent relationship with parents, and that's a good part, you know, working with our parents. Also, the um, the St. Therese Bay was also um, a great help with the collaboration of parents. So this is sounds like what I said, we're going to do a drastic repair all around the building to change the fascia board, um, um, repair the guttering, replace guttering that needs to replace and you know make this more visible to, um, to the community. You know? Okay this is our 
fourth, fourth clippings. This little area is where we allow infant one, or what, what you guys call kindergarten one, kindergarten two, for them to come and have their little recess or break. They will come underneath here, they will sit, they will have their snack, right? This is where the infants will have their snack, kindergarten one. They space off because what happened, there are times where the smaller kids need a little area to relax, you know. So we built this for the smaller kids, right? Their building is at the back. But again, this will need some repairs. As you can see here, we need to do a little repair again on the roof. But this is very good, especially during the um, dry season when it's very hot. The kids can relax here, they can watch their games, volleyball, basketball, or when we have sports day, the children can sit here and watch the different activities going along. This was also constructed by the students and myself here as the teacher of Standard 6. This has been here for the past five years. So it's time for us to do a little repair on this building. We have a problem with this building. This building was built with the elevation of the land. So the front of the building will be extremely high, but the back is very low. The past years, we used to have constant break-in. If you can see at the top here, because the building is so low at the back here, the guys will come to the back here, they will break the ceiling, and they go inside the building. Recently, we had a break-in about, about four months ago. They break into the office and they, they mess around with our supplies, you know damaging our, our school office property. But this is extremely low. One, one of our future plans that we need to do is to construct a cement roof building. Maybe a cement building, probably 20 by 20 feet with a cement roof to store our printer, to store our weed cutters. Because with this building, this is not safe. This is not safe, the thieves constantly damaging the bulbs, they rip off the bulbs to the back. If you notice that one over there, notice this, this was done by the guys. You put, you put up lights, they just rip it off at night time because the building is extremely low, you know? So we need to do some work on that. This is an old building. This, our plan is to demolish this. We need to get rid of this. And I want to build here a nice, Relax, relaxation shed. I want to build a building probably, probably 25 by 25. A nice shed for the children to sit, have lunch, for them to sit down and read a book. So I want back here to be like a little entertainment area for the kids just to relax during the dry weather and different um, time of the school year. You know, the kids will come up to school and we want to make the entire compound look child friendly, you know. But we're, we're gonna get rid of this. This is just an eyesore right now. It, this has been here for the past 40 years. When I was a little boy, this was built. So imagine, this, this has been here for a while. You know, we're gonna get rid of this and build a nice structure. This is the male and female's bathroom. This side is for the males, that side is for the females. What we are going to do um, within the next month, this month or probably next month, we're going to install at least two urinals for the boys, right? We have one and we're going to install some more because one of the requirements from ministry is for us to have urinals for the boys. We have about three bathrooms for boys and we have three bathrooms for the girls. But we need to install urinals for, for the boys and we're gonna get that going pretty soon. Thank you. Good morning, once again fellow friends of the USA. This is our school library. This was erected about three, two years, going for three years now. This was built again to, with the kind assistance of um, uh, missionaries with Mr. Patrick and his team. Yeah, they came and they assisted us with, with this building. Um, at this moment, it is not in use. As soon as everything cleared up in terms of students returning to school, we're going to get our library back into use. This is this building um, has a variety of books from preschool right up to standard six. Um, 
two years ago, before COVID, the students used to come here. We have class schedules where the students come. They come with their class teacher. We have about 35 minutes reading time. They sit, they read quietly, and thereafter they go back to their classroom. So this has been going on from infant one to standard six. Hopefully as the students return, we're gonna get this back into use because we need our students to read. That is our primary objective. Our students must read every day. Even though they are at home, we also send books for them so that <laughs> during their spare time they can read. You know, I emphasize reading as a major key point in order to build their knowledge and build skills in writing. Yeah, so pretty soon we're gonna get this back into action. I'm just praying that all goes well, that the COVID um, is so the kids can come back to school. But again, thanks to all the great help assisting us with this renovated library. Okay, what we want to do, what we want to do here for this school year and probably within the year to come, we want to improve the classroom itself. If you notice the flooring here, we need to do some repairs on the floor. It's eroded, so we need to patch this with cement. Um, in order for this to look attractive and appealing to the kids, tiling will be great. It will be nice to tile the entire floor, but we don't know, this might be very, very expensive. So maybe what we're planning to do will be paint the floor. We're planning to paint, paint, paint this floor, you know? You know, because we want this to look attractive, appealing, enticing for the kids. It will take a while, but we need to improve the classroom itself. You know, the flooring. We want to change all of these um, chalk board, and we want to use the white board because the teachers are complaining about the dust from the chalk. I know there are some teachers who have allergy like myself and having problem using chalk in the classroom. So our objective actually is to get rid of these chalk board and use white board. And that will help a lot, you know, rather than just like this. This is not healthy for us anymore. So, like what I said, to fix over the classroom floor and change the um, white boards. This is another classroom that needs urgent repair. The flooring for some part is actually opening. We need to do urgent repairs on, on this floor. It has a massive crack. I don't know if it was affected by it earthquake or something but we need to repair this you know so this will get attention first this flooring also has the same problem like other floors it's actually needs some repair with some cement we need to remove open these cracks fill them over and make them child friendly and thereafter probably if you have the finance to tie this glass room or or we'll just get rid of floor paint and these classrooms. Yeah, this is the infant one or the kindergarten classroom. The same thing applies to this, the flooring. It needs urgent repair. Patches, we need to add some concrete to the floor and if we try to get them um, paint the floor or tiling will be nice. Okay, once again, here we have the infant one or kindergarten. Kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three from infant one to standard two to the back. This is the lower division building. This is, we recently renovated this building. It was in a total mess. We had to do some investment to get this going. And also thanks to um, you missionaries who provided the paint to paint this building with Mr. Patrick and his crew. Yes, the paint was donated from you guys. We managed to, to get this going. The problem we are facing with the infant division. This place, especially if the kids were here, if the kids were here at school, this place is very marshy. It is extremely low. What we plan to do here, we want to upgrade this entire platform. We want to build a nice playground for the smaller kids. We want to build slides. We want to elevate this. You know, it's very, very marshy. See? So we want to elevate it, fill it up nice, and then build a nice playground here, this entire portion, you know. Because we have the small kids here, and 
We want them to be in a clean, um, clean environment. We don't want them when they come to school, when they walk here, they get extremely dirty. No, we want them to, to stay dry. We don't want them to um, go in mud, we, you know, this place is, so we need to do some work here on this platform and eventually put rails on the head because what happened with the infant ones, when they stand there, they like to, they will up, up, roughly just push the, their fellow colleagues and somebody can get, you know, they can get really, really serious hurt, you know. So we also want to put the entire rail for the kids, you know, prevention. So we're working on this. We, we, we got a lot of work completed last school year, despite of COVID. We did a lot of work on this building. It was in a total mess, you know, but thanks again. And with this parents, we managed to get this back on its foot. This is the, um, our school playground. This entire portion is about an acre of land. We also need to keep this clean. Our school is about 2.5, to three acres of land but this portion here if the kids are not at school we need to get keep this land every three weeks this is a big portion of land we use a drive more we, we actually pay a guy to come here every three weeks to get this portion of land low as you know when the kids are here we'll use this for our recreational games for vo um, volleyball, we use this for football, we use this for um, softball. Um, it, it's time for PE, the kids come out here for PE. So it's a beautiful land, but we just need to keep it clean. It's been now going for two years that we're keeping this clean, despite the kids are not here. We have some picnic tables under the, these trees. It's very cool to relax. You know, we want to do a little bit of upgrade paint these um, benches and cement bench and, and tables we want to paint them you know so it look attractive it, you know we want to keep it one clean and beautiful for the kids here we have our pavilion this pavilion belongs to the nuns right but again with the kind help from the missionary parish they came they send us some funds for us to renovate this pavilion. We use this every day. Once the kids are here at school, we use this for our assembly, we use this for our entertainment. We use the pavilion whenever we have meetings. So it is just rightful for us to keep the pavilion clean and beautiful, right? So this is our little entertainment building. We have exclusive access to this building, right? And it's not just about a hundred yards from the school it's not far so we could easily traverse now we have an excellent walkway a cemented walkway this helps a lot especially during the rainy season if it's like no if this wasn't here it will be difficult for visitors to come to our school they will have to go all around to reach the, um, the building but with this walkway it's easily traversed now we don't have any problem our, our feet are literally dry. We don't have to be walking in the mud. Um, it's excellent. It's a wonderful walkway. And again, a big thank you um, to the donors who assisted us in getting this walkway built and the renovation of the pavilion. So far, I want to say Our Lady Star of the Sea Primary School. I am more than happy to have you guys as our sister school. We will work hand in hand because we want to um, build this excellent relationship um, in terms of academics and in terms of extra um, extramural activities. There are many needs here. One, at this moment, there are many there are parents who cannot afford their um, school fees, right? So, whatever assistance I get, I will use that to um, clear some parents' um, school fees. Um, we are also assisting parents who don't have access to school supplies. We provide school supplies. And as soon as our school reopen, we'll provide food to the needy students. Yes, there are students who come to school without food. And as a good Christian school, we try to assist these students and those who are in need. Right. So last year during COVID session, we gave out pantry to more than 80 families. 
we did that again to the kind um, friends from our Lady Star of the Sea Parish. They assisted us with some funds and I bought groceries and we distributed to many, many little flower parents. So at this moment, there are needs and we will see how best we can assist our parents and also to improve our physical structure of the building, internal and external. Once again, I say thank you, Our Lady Star of the Sea, for this excellent collaboration. May God bless you, and we continue work hand in hand. Thank you.